Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Checkit.com and welcome to another Walkthrough Wednesday. I'm sorry that this tutorial is a little bit later than it should be, but um, I have a perfectly good excuse, I promise. <laughs> Um, I've been spending the last couple of days driving around town trying to find a car to buy since my dad is selling the one that I'm currently driving and I need a car so I've been just kind of uh, car shopping and stuff like that so sorry that I've been busy but you know what sometimes life deals you a hand that you're not prepared for and you just got to roll with it so I I'm kind of sorry but you know what you just got to deal with it all right so <laughs> okay I'm just kidding but anyway guys let's show you what it is that we are creating for this week's tutorial now normally I give you guys a brief like explanation of what it is we're gonna be creating but in all seriousness I have no idea how to describe this there's just a whole bunch of blocks so I guess that's kind of an apl applicable name for this is blocks or something like that I don't know uh, the reason I'm showing this to you guys is because well I made it by accident and I thought it was just kind of interesting to look at so uh, I don't know, here you guys go, a tutorial on how to create these weirdo looking extruded blocks with this cool little pattern in the middle here. But anyway guys, if you are interested in watching the tutorial, just you know, keep watching and blah -de -blah -de bar. let's just get going, shall we? So let's make our new document, call it Blocks. Uh, normally I use 1920 by 1080, but this time around I'm going to use 1900 by 1100 just to kind of mix it up. And let's click OK. We'll use Control or Command Zero on our keyboard to zoom into canvas size here. And let's double click our background layer and click OK to make that into a regular layer. And the first thing we're going to do is apply some clouds on top of this. But before we do so, go to the left hand side and make sure you have the default black and white. And if you don't, all you have to do is hit the letter D on your keyboard and that will reset those for you. So once those are reset to black and white, let's go to Filter. Let's go to Render and choose Clouds. And next up, let's go to our text tool by hitting letter T. And let's click somewhere in the middle of the document to type in our text. Uh, the font that I'm using is called Mahawa or Mahawa, whatever, something along those lines. And you guys can check out the description if you want to download, uh, download this font yourself. And all I'm going to be typing is the backslash, a forward slash, then I'm going to hit the enter key and do the forward slash and then the backslash. So that way we get this cool little X pattern. However, for those of you that just freshly installed this font onto your, com onto your computer, you might find that these are a little bit spaced out. So if you want to get this same effect, what you're going to have to do is double click or, or maybe triple click. I don't know. Just select all of the text that you have typed out. So we have the four slashes all selected. And then you're going to go off to the right hand side and open your character menu, which if you don't have, you can open up by going to window and clicking character. Whoops, I think I just closed it, so let me bring that back up. And just to keep things simple, just copy these same exact settings. I have a font size of 194, the vertical scaling set to 117.11 points. Or, sorry, that's not the vertical scaling, that is the leading, apparently. The vertical scaling is a little bit different. And we're going to set the VA tracking method to minus 500. And then everything else is the default 100% for the vertical scale, 100% horizontal scale, zero, black. And also make sure that your anti-aliasing is set to none. That's actually pretty important there. So once you have all those settings in for your slashes and stuff to get this X shape, go ahead and choose the check mark up top. And I'm going to switch over to my move tool. And let's also bring up the transform tool by hitting control or command T on the keyboard. And I'm just going to scale this up while holding alt and shift. So that way I can make it just a little bit bigger. Uh, somewhere right there looks good. And I'll hit the check mark up top. And let's go to select and select all or you can hit control or command A on your keyboard and then you'll select the second and the fifth icons right here on this little bar assuming that you still have your move tool selected so that way it centers um, vertically and horizontally there and then we'll go to select and choose deselect or you can use control or command D on your keyboard and here's what we're gonna do next let me close up the properties just so you can get a better look 
I'm going to hover my mouse over the thumbnail for our text layer, and I'm going to click that thumbnail while holding the control key, or you would use the command key if you're on a Mac. And that should load up these blocks as a selection. And so once you have that selection, we can turn off the text layer. Let's select layer zero, and let's go to image, go to adjustments, and we're going to choose curves, or you can use the shortcut control or command M. So with this, all we're going to do is select our black output and bring that up until it's at roughly 180. And with that, we'll click OK. And then we'll go to select, we'll choose inverse, or you can use control shift I if you like shortcuts. And then once again, we'll go back to image adjustments curves. And this time around, let's bring the white output down to, let's try around 200 or 205. And then we'll also click and drag somewhere in the middle and bring that down into the right just to kind of darken up the overall image here. And then we'll click OK and then choose select, deselect, or once again, control or command D on your keyboard. So next up, let's go to filter and choose convert for smart filters. And then we'll go to filter once again and choose stylize and extrude. Now for this setting, we're going to set the type to blocks with a size of 20 pixels. You can actually experiment with that as you please and then set the depth to somewhere like 170, 150, whatever works for you and also choose level based with solid front faces check marks. And we'll click OK. It'll do the extrusion and then this is what you'll get which is pretty interesting in and of itself so you can actually keep it right here if you want but you know what we can just keep going on and you know, make this look a little bit more interesting. So let's duplicate layer zero by hitting control or command J on our keyboard. Or if you don't like doing that, you can click and drag layer zero to the create a new layer icon down at the bottom of your layers panel. So now that we have layer zero and layer zero copy, let's make these a little bit, e oh, go go away, I, I'm busy. Jeez, trying to call me in the middle of a tutorial, go away. <laughs> Sorry, Dwayne. So anyway, let's double click the name for layer zero copy and change that to layer one. If I could do that, there we go. So that way we have layer zero and layer one that are a little easier to distinguish here. And we're going to double click the extrude for layer one. And so this way we can basically edit the extrusion and make it a little bit different from layer zero. So all we're going to do here is change the size to like 40 pixels, you know, just to that way it's a little bit, uh, a little bit different, but still like within the same uh, degree. So like 20, 40, 60, you know, just something that's kind of like a multiple of itself would be, uh, would be best for you guys. But anyway, experiment with that as you choose. I'm going to stick with 40 and click OK. And you should notice that the blocks are a little bit, uh, a little bit broader and a little bit thicker there. And so what we're going to do is change the blend mode of layer one from normal to divide. And we're going to get some craziness here. So let's change the opacity down to something like 67%. And so that way it's a little bit more grayed out instead of white. And now let's go to our adjustments panel and choose the invert adjustment layer. And so this is the overall effect that we should be getting here. And the last thing that we want to do to make this pop just a little bit more is to go to layer and we'll choose a new fill layer and we'll make a gradient. And for this, let's choose a mode of vivid light with an opacity of 80% and let's click OK. And let's change the style to radial. Let's change the angle to 30 degrees with a scale of 150 and let's toggle the reverse and let's click on the gradient to edit that and let's double click the left hand black stop and let's just change this to like a like a sort of dark reddish color click OK and then let's go to the black color and make that a slightly darker shade of of red there so let's click OK click OK click OK and there we go <laughs> we are done this is an effect that is extremely easy to do, guys, and some of you might be kind of bored with that, but you know what? Maybe you guys were kind of unfamiliar with the extrude filter, 
So that might be something that you guys want to experiment with and maybe make some sort of cool effect with. I don't know. That's completely up to you guys. This is just kind of like an introduction sort of a thing to maybe a different style that you guys can make up on your own. So if you guys enjoy this tutorial or you learned something new, give this video a like, give it a thumbs up, you know, or you can leave a comment for some, you know, fun ideas that we can do with this like extrude filter. Whatever feedback you guys can give, I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, for those of you that are once again going to be complaining about the simplicity of this tutorial, just wait until next week. It's going to be pretty fun. So uh, that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Peace out.